Good morning from Port Aventura World here in Spain where it's time for our day one vlog. It's summer 2023 and I'm really excited to be back here and try out the new roller coaster. Oh, I'm really looking forward to Uncharted and see what it's all about. I've kept it spoiler free so I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fantastic I'm sure and yeah I'm really excited to see just how it blends into the park and of course how it rides. Along with that with it being the main summer season the park's actually open through until 10.30 tonight which is great. We'll get back on lots of our favourite rides including Shambhala, Dragon Khan, Furious Paco and so much more. And also as well Tempo del Fuego opens for summer only now and Charlotte's never done it. I have never done it and I've heard such good things so I'm really looking forward to seeing it. It's an awesome indoor show with loads of fire and pyro it really is fantastic you got all the entertainment for summer as well including the big stage shows and also Fiesta Ventura which I've not seen for years it's a nighttime fireworks show with all floats and lighting it really is a brilliant show so of course we're covering all this over the next two days this is our day one vlog and of course we'll have day two coming up next for you all we also started off our visit to Port Aventura with Ferrari Land and we had a great evening there didn't oh, we? It was absolutely brilliant we got on quite a lot of rides which is fantastic. Yeah including five rides on Red Force as well but uh, come and join us as we make our way back in to Port Aventura really looking forward to it I love this park and we've made our way inside the park welcome back to Port Aventura oh, it's always great getting back here beautiful park there's Woody Woodpecker now let's make our way around this corner and be greeted by the fantastic view as we enter into Mediterranean with the Mediterranean Lagoon and then of course the awesome skyline of the park. Oh it's gorgeous round here, it's like a little Mediterranean fishing village with all the buildings and of course the epic skyline of Shammy Bee just over there, it's always great to see her. And yeah, we've actually used our Blackpool Pleasure Beach season pass for entry into the park today because yeah if you have got a season pass for Pleasure Beach back in the UK you get one free day's entry to a variety of different theme parks in Europe including Port Aventura so yeah it's a great little benefit of having the Pleasure Beach pass with that though you need to actually go to the guest services window to the right of the entrance not one of the normal ticket booths so yeah we did wait uh, about 20 minutes in a queue to pick that up but it's worth it because it saved us like 100 euros today um, getting that ticket which is fantastic yeah always great getting back here to Port Aventura and of course very excited for Uncharted. It's located in the far west themed area of the park and yeah I'm really excited to give that a go. I was hoping to get around there a bit earlier this morning but uh, they actually opened the park a bit later now. It used to be a 10am opening um, and then stagger the rides. Now the park opens at 10.30 uh, and the rides open straight away which uh, it is better how the rides open from 10.30 however they used to open like guest services and the turnstiles about 45 minutes before so you could get in and then they'd hold people at certain areas uh, so it used to be a bit more efficient getting in um, how it used to be but uh, yeah it's great to just be back here. Look at all the lovely planting. Gorgeous round here, isn't it, Charlotte? Oh, it's just so lovely. The theme is just fantastic. Yeah, I love the theme at this park. I can just hear Furious Baco coming round over there as well. There it is. Hey, fantastic. <laughs> All the music throughout the areas are oh, is wonderful. And yeah, we're going to head round to Uncharted. It actually said 40 minute wait just on the board there. So yeah, we'll head around that way. It might be a little bit more by the time we get there. But still, that's the main event, what we've come to see. You know, looking forward to the other rides, of course. But we really want to see this new indoor roller coaster. Oh, great to be back and see that view again. And let's make our way over into Far West just here. And up to Uncharted. Now Far West is a huge area of the park, yeah, you've got loads of rides, buildings, fantastic theming and yeah the entrance to Uncharted is just around this corner. When we were here in June last year the show building wasn't even up you know and I was thinking when this show building goes in how's it going to look on the skyline? Well as you can see there's all this rock work around the side and it looks absolutely awesome. What a way of kind of covering up the building. So I was thinking how's Uncharted going to fit into this Wild West theme? Well look at that, it's actually added a new dimension to this area of the park with all the rocks. I wonder if they light them up at night. It reminds me a little bit of Cars Land, Radiator Springs with all the cars um, and rocks, all the rocks are going across the top. It's really good. It does, like, that looks fantastic. It fits in really nice down here. Uncharted. Our Enigma de Penitence, of course, Penitence being the town that we're in here in this Wild West area. This is very nice. In pictures, it looks very flat, but actually, um, it's got a lot of texture to it, which is fantastic. Right, let's go and join the queue. Yeah, lots of detailing over there on the facade. Like, as you can see, they've got the smaller trees on there as well. Bit of false perspective, which is fantastic. And then, of course, you've got the face just up here. Cactus. 
on the top there as well. It does look fantastic. It really fits in nicely with this area. I don't think it has loads of interior queue line though, because as you can see, big queue all the way outside here. I think it might have been better if they'd have done more indoor queue line, but still, it looks great from the outside and love how it fits in with Far West just here. The big face in the rocks just up there. Well, we've been waiting 45 minutes so far. We've now made our way inside the show building. We've got a little cattle paying queue line in here. Lots of feeling to look at, which is good. Yeah, they've done a great job with the exterior there. It fits in great with the themed area. Into the office, just over here now. Animatronics here in the pre-show area. I like how the backlit the windows there, they look fantastic. We've had about 10 minutes of downtime just. Ooh, look at that. Oh, wow. It's kind of like we've gone through a gap in the wall, you know, and the theme all of a sudden has changed. Look at this. Very cool in here. And well, we thought we were going into the station because we've just gone past that merge point. There's another big cattle paint queue line around here. This is very well themed though, it doesn't pick up well on the camera. Yeah, it's very nice in here with all the rocks. Hey, here we go, we've made our way up here into the station. I am very impressed with the theming throughout though. Very nice. Yeah, it's kind of like you're in the caverns or coming down from the ceiling up there as well. And here we go, looking forward to this so much. Indoor roller coaster of Puerto Venturas. Yeah, of course, the ride itself manufactured by Intamin and the theming has been done by Sally Dark Rides. And there's the ride system, coaster train. Yeah, it runs three trains. Each train can seat 12 riders. So it has got quite a low throughput of only around 900 per hour.
just had our first ever ride on Uncharted here at Port Aventura, new for 2023, and we're really excited for this one because we love indoor roller coasters, don't we? I love an indoor coaster, and the actual coaster was fantastic. Of course, manufactured by Intamin. I've got to say, the ride system, very comfortable. And as soon as we stepped into the train, the restraints are brilliant. I feel like Intamin builds some of the best coaster trains in the business now. And so, yeah, 12 riders per train, running three trains. Not the best in terms of throughput, around 900 per hour um, which isn't amazing for a park of this scale they really could have done with some extra trains however the trains they have got are great and then of course yeah um, the overall coaster is fantastic it features five launches in there and all the launches I thought were fantastic in there well, there was absolutely brilliant the one that I liked the best is like was launched backwards down a drop it was, it was just brilliant it was quite a steep drop that it was, was as well I wasn't expecting it of course there's a spike in there as well it's not a full vertical spike but there is a spike where you launch forwards and we kind of twisted round and that's the thing with these intermittent multi-dimensional coasters um, you don't just stay facing forwards they're effectively a spinning coaster as well not spinning as in to make you dizzy but they can turn into the show scenes and turn at different parts and I really like that because we launched kind of from that big screen up into the spike and then turned and then came down however I've got to say I am disappointed with the theming on the inside I think the exterior looks amazing the queue line was great it all built up and there was a really nice scene at the start of the ride but then after that it was literally a couple of screen based sections and no other props at all in there yeah, was there I was really disappointed Pointed. Like Sean said, you've got this fantastic facade outside, so well themed, the queue line, there was so much going on. Then it was just screens and then it was just nothing. I think a big issue as well was there's not enough dividing walls between scenes because when you were going through different other parts of the ride, you could see okay. them other scenes. Like you could see the opening scene in quite a lot of parts of the ride. It's like the whole show building was way too open inside. Even just some kind of black cloths hanging around um, just to stop you seeing other parts of the ride would have been great because as soon as we went in out of that you first scene, everything. You could see everything in front of you. You know, we saw another car being launched, uh, another one going up into the spike, you, and it kind of spoiled it in a way because you knew what was coming up. So, yeah, overall, uh, I think the coaster itself exceeded expectations. The full package with the theming um, on the inside definitely under delivered. I really thought there was going to be a lot more to see on the ride. The screen based content that was there was okay. I wouldn't say it was anything exceptional. It was just some flat screens in front of us, and then the latter screen based section, it had one above as well with the projections. But, yeah, overall, Overall, I think it's a nice addition to the park in terms of it's something else indoors. Uh, this park used to have hardly anything indoors, so I'm glad they've got an indoor coaster. However, I do feel like they could have done better with the theming, um, 100%. It just doesn't uh, have much to look at throughout the ride. It is also quite a short ride, but for me, I don't think that's the problem. You know? I think the issue that I found is we had like the screen at the end, and I felt like it abruptly stopped just so quick. I was expecting more, and we was in the station ready to get off. Yeah, it just goes to show. I mean, they spent 25 million euros on that attraction huge amount on the ride system making it fit into the area which i like but yeah you get onto the ride after all that build up and it was just a little bit disappointing so um, yeah it's one of those i've heard mixed reviews from it that's our thoughts i've got to say though that ride system from intimate if the money was really spent on that theming wise you could have something pretty spectacular was brilliant. it was like that ride system is great and obviously very similar to gringotts and um, that can be found at universal studios florida um, it's that same sort of ride system obviously that's a lot higher throughput um, and yeah it's got some tilting track and other elements but yeah it is a multi dimensional mentioned coaster um, from, from Intamin but yeah that was fantastic but yeah that, that's our review of it of course we'll give it another go whilst we're here um, but yeah it's a throw throughput um, for quite a short ride with not much theming however shame. yeah it, it is a shame how it's ended up however um, it's something different for this park and yeah I did enjoy the coaster itself the launches were actually quite snappy they as well were. they took me by surprise I don't know the top speed of them launches so I've been trying to find out some more facts but um, they felt pretty fast maybe 30 40 miles an hour one of those fouls um, it was very smooth very enjoyable the coaster yeah, they really could have spent more on the theme and inside. And of course, there is also a gift shop at the end of the ride just here as well. And yeah, just take your photo during the ride. I didn't notice that, but yeah, there is a photo because the screen's just in here. Of course, you've got all your merchandise. Try a lot of just generic Port nice. Aventura merch. I like that. We'll have a look in the main shop at some point as well. But yeah, here's your Uncharted merch. 19.95 for that, not too bad. You've got the lanyard that you can get there too. We've got 30% off shorts down there if you need some new shorts or flip flops. Awesome here. You got the mug there, quite basic with the mug. We got a price on the bottom. $16.95. That's quite expensive. Yeah, for a very basic mug. You're kind of paying for the name. I did like though how they kind of brought it into the Far West area. I was really skeptical about how it was going to work in terms of fitting in. And yeah, it does fit in really well. It's not really that that's the problem. It's just the lack of theming um, throughout the ride. And like I said, just seeing them other scenes. Got the nice bags just there too. Oh that's cool. You got like Stampeder on there and yeah. 
Far West kind of brought into it. The Iron Horse, which is the restaurant, Tomahawk, the Woody, Silver River Flume. That's quite nice. And you got this t-shirt here? And it's got it on the back. That's quite cool. Yeah, I like how we kind of did this journey, you know, um, from Far West. And I thought that transition was done really well, actually, in the ride. And that was my main concern. You know, so I'm so glad that they did that really well. 30% off shorts? There you go, and this is a lot of just generic kind of Port of Ventura merch. They've got something really cool over here though, so let me show you this. Now for those of you that are visiting that are disabled and don't want to experience the ride, or maybe you physically can't, they've actually got a virtual reality experience um, here in the shop, which I think is fantastic. So yeah, I don't know if that's a ride POV or something completely different, but how good's that that they're offering it? Yeah, I think that's fantastic, but yeah, there you go. So that's just down here in the shop. And again, just taking a look at the show building just here from a bit further back. Fantastic with all the rock work there as well. And I think it's Sally Dark Rise has done a really good job with the budget they've been given. Um, obviously, if Port Aventura had given a bit more budget to them for the theme on the ride, I think they'd have done a great job because all this exterior and the queue line is great. Also, they've opened up this pathway again here now. They blocked it quite a few years ago. I remember when it used to come, it was open. Uh, but yeah, they put like all trees and cactus there. But yeah, they've opened that up again now, probably because they've blocked a bit of it over there with the queue line. I do think it could do with some more interior queue um, at some point as well. Maybe take out some of the game stalls over there and uh, do some more interior line but uh, yeah I tell you what though um, it's nice to have an indoor coaster here at this park of course you've got the Sesame Street dark ride that opened a few years ago uh, the trapless dark ride that's fantastic um, so yeah it's good to see they're doing more indoor things and of course with the additions um, over in Ferrari land next door as well with the two dark rides there go back 10 years and um, there was not really dark rides at Porto Ventura I mean you had Sea Odyssey simulator attraction but that closed and um, so it's nice to actually have some more indoor things because yeah this park of course it gets very 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 hot especially in the summer how's that building look from a bit further back oh look at that wow it looks awesome on the skyline really impressed with how they fit it in just here and they just got the water slide just above it there too over in the water park and yeah that was never really themed in so looks a bit better now actually It'd be great if they themed the top of that tower a bit more but uh, yeah looks better now that does so we've made our way round into Mexico now and this is beautifully themed in here big indoor food court with all the lighting. They actually have stage shows in here as well. What have you got, Charlotte? I've gone for the pasta bolognese. There you go. Very like nice. 5 95 Yeah, which isn't too bad. Yeah, it's good pricing, mm. that is. There you go. Lovely. outside there now and I've got to say it is nice to be able to dine and watch some entertainment here at Port Aventura. I do really like that. How was your food? Oh, I really enjoyed that. A little bit of pasta, so that was very nice. Pretty good price as well, really. Yeah, like six euro, five ninety-five, not too bad. Fantastic. There's a look, of course, at Hurricane Condor, the park's Intamin Drop Tower. Yeah, it's absolutely humongous. What they've actually done, they've implemented a virtual queue at the moment as well. So yeah, we'll definitely get on it at some point and give that a go quite interesting. Something that I am looking forward to tomorrow is Templo del Fuego and the reason I say tomorrow is it's actually closed on Wednesdays which seems really weird especially with it being peak summer season. Uh, they really class it more of a show um, than they do a ride and that's probably why um, but still it's nice that this is back open and yeah I'm looking forward to doing this tomorrow. Big priority for us. Yeah I've not been in there for many years. It's like a walkthrough attraction with loads of fire. It's absolutely awesome. In fact it used to be open all the time and then yeah uh, it just runs limited for the summer season now so it's a big reason for coming um, in the summer because normally we try and come at the park uh, a bit of a quieter time you know come and visit not in summer uh, but the issue is yeah if you don't come you don't know, get Temple of Fuego no, you know I've never seen it so I'm looking forward to it yeah I've wanted to come in the summer for a good few years to come and see that again and also of course as well get on Uncharted uh, so that's our main reason for coming in July normally we'd avoid the busy peak season here because it can get unbearable with queue times I tell you what though the park is beautiful to walk around all the landscaping, all the trees. And yeah, this is the Mexican themed area around here, which is very nice. And there's Hurricane Condor. So yeah, interesting to see how they're doing the virtual line on there. We'll definitely give that a try. Yeah, you can see a big sign for it out there. But yeah, does that mean that it's gonna be pretty much walk on or not? I'm not too sure. Really, when it comes to virtual lines, to be honest, it doesn't look much different to it normally does. It's still backed up 
all the way over there so i'm really not too sure with that one but we will see is that something they're planning on rolling out to other rides personally i hope not i prefer just queuing up you know i like just getting to a line and waiting in it but uh yeah interesting right we're making our way down to shammy b now shambhala <laughs> love this you got some roman street theater around here in mexico he's got a gun yeah. <laughs> that's really cool i was just kind of interacting with people in the area i had heard they brought back a lot of roaming characters this year so that's good to see oh here we go this has got to be one of my favorite views ever in a theme park walking up here into china shambhala towering over the skyline there of the park absolutely awesome the past 2012 blm hyper coaster opening day i was here and it was fantastic it opened on my birthday 12th of may 2012 and of course dragon khan just underneath it there a john wardley classic of course legendary roller coaster designer and yeah he designed that beautiful bnm it really is a spectacular ride and of course you've got the great wall of china just over there all the pandas all the theming of this area really is beautiful and that skyline looks amazing with the two bnm coasters interacting with each other and of course you can see all the inversions there that make up dragon khan all these nice trees down here too i feel like these lights are new in fact they are they've got some new lights down here to complement the view but yeah look at that oh the roar of dragon khan as well oh it always gives me goosebumps coming down here it's one of my all-time favorite coasters and it's just the theme and kind of the connection that i've got to with it opening on my birthday as well and i followed the construction so much of this it was amazing coming out to ride it when it opened but yeah special ride plus i love a bnm hyper and this is certainly uh, one of the best for me fantastic layouts and of course yeah expedition our himalaya uh, because this is supposed to resemble the himalaya mountains all the way down the back here uh, which is fantastic and it's snowing look at this <laughs> here we go let's go and see what the operations are like down here in shambhala i've not seen a train going up the lift hill yet there's a train in the station one stacking on the brake run there oh it's just going in is it on three trains it looks like it could be shambhala it's got a great soundtrack they even made a song for it back in 2012 as well it plays around the area it's like shambhala shambhala that design of the two B&Ms crossing over each other is awesome as well. Two hour, hour. advertised wait. Wow, two hour wait. We've got some big queues across the park. The Tuki Splash, oh, one hour 30. Silver River Flume, one hour 40. Oh wow, we've got some big queues. Stampede, one hour 30, back on there. Woo, it's busy. Luckily, this has got single rider and I think we'll probably go for that. Wow. I mean, we knew it was going to be busy. We are in July, of course. It is peak season. But oh, wow, that's a big queue. Oh, look at that massive cattle paint queue. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> look at this. Yeah, single rider. If you come around this way, just off to the left there. Even singles is quite busy. <laughs> well, we've been waiting for 10 minutes so far here in the single rider line. And I tell you what, that main queue, no wonder it's two hours. Two trains have dispatched in 10 minutes here on Shambhala. Like some of the worst operations I've ever seen. I mean, odds are never normally that great at Port Aventura anyway. But still, like, you know, this coast has dispatched two trains in 10 minutes. Like, this is slow. I've had hundreds of rides on Shambhala over the past 11 years and I've never seen it operated so poorly as I have today. These operations are terrible. The air gates are only just opening, and it's on three trains. We've got the other two trains stacked up back there. Absolutely terrible, what a shame. Such a fantastic coaster like this. But yeah, no ops are never normally brilliant here. Uh, however, yeah, this today is like completely unbearable. It's almost two o'clock, and this is only our second ride. Crazy, we was here at the park opening. Oh, I tell you what, it just keeps getting worse, this does. Like we're talking five minute dispatches, and empty seats going out we've seen at least 10 and that's the ones we've just seen empty seats going out oh finally a dispatch like crazy oh, there's nothing wrong with them rows or anything because they filled on the rise before there are loads of empty seats they're missing singles oh my god crazy and there goes the empty seats up the lift hill just there two hour plus queue down here well, I've never been so frustrated with operations before. That was absolutely terrible, it really was. But still, wait 45 minutes there in single rider. The train in front of this just came into the station, had six empty seats on it, which was crazy. But still, I'm here on Shambhala. 
do love this coaster. What a view. There's some charted show building. Makes you realise how big it is. Oh wow, here we go. Shammy B, we're back. Train. The restraints aren't even down by the looks of it over the station. Hey, enjoy your ride. <laughs> Shall we be? We're going to sit on the brake run for ages now. Well, it's a spectacular coaster there, that, but blimey, these ops. I can't believe this. Been sat on the brake run now for just over 10 minutes. We're talking over five minutes of dispatch, which is crazy. Like, Charlotte's been in the brakes there for five minutes, and they still haven't sent this train out that's in the station. I've never seen it this bad before. Like, honestly, this is crazy. <laughs> I think Charlotte's clapping because they finally dispatched another train. Oh, blimey. Crazy. Never seen operations like it. You know, they're not even shutting the offload gate just here. Like, good job, you know, they don't just want to walk straight over there to the track. Oh, blimey. All the years that I've been riding coasters. I've never seen operations as poor as I've seen that on Shambhala here at Port Aventura. 10 minutes we were sat on the brake run. Same for Charlotte so as well. I came in and I thought, what is going on? They're taking a long time to get people on and they hadn't even opened the air gates. People was only just getting on. I can't believe we sat there for 10 minutes. It's a joke, it really is. I mean, I know operations have never been great here. However, they've never been that bad. Five minute plus dispatches on there and then they can't even fill every seat it wasn't just single seats that were going empty there was also rows of two it's one of them though you've got a massive queue multiple queues and then the single rider queue you're not putting people on it's an absolute show it is another big problem here and this isn't a new thing and that is express is massively oversold here i don't think it ever sells out express and that's a big problem because the express queue is massive of course they're prioritizing that for people that have paid um, but yeah that main queue more than two hours on those odds was hardly moving. Yeah, we actually were watching a couple of other people in the main queue to see how much they moved, and lot. they did like one up and down in the 45 minutes we waited well, there. Like when we was queuing, the man didn't even tell me to go into the single rider bay. I could see the seats, yeah. so I just went myself. I was like, I'm not going to stand and wait for someone to fill the seats. It's awful, it really is, Absolutely. and yeah, it really takes away from the experience. In terms of the coaster, you know me, I love Shambhal. It's a great ride. Um, you've got some great airtime. The first drop's fantastic. The location, no water splash at the moment. No, I was quite surprised when we went through. I was waiting for a little bit of a Cool down, I've got honest. to say, it looks a bit dirty it down does. here. I mean, you saw it better on the ride, but yeah, this looks really poorly maintained. Um, but yeah, I tell you what, that's so such a shame, that is. It really takes away from it. And also, leaving people out on a brake run for 10 minutes um, in this heat as well. I mean, I know breakdowns can happen, uh, but this wasn't a breakdown. That was just uh, the poor operation. Oh. Never seen anything quite like it. And yeah, as you can see, the update the queue time to two hours, 30 minutes just there as well for Shambhala, that's yeah, probably a bit more accurate. I knew that it was underestimated. I think we're gonna go um, for Dragon Calm because it's advertised at 50. And to be honest, from watching the operations on there, he seems to be getting the trains out quicker than Shammy. Here's the entrance then to Dragon Calm to make our way in. I do love the theming here. It is a big cattle pen queue underneath, but to be honest, it doesn't look too bad. I've waited longer than this, and I believe it's running three trains too. This 1995 BLM sit-down coaster, the Wardley Classic. I like the big dragon head here as well. And an hour later we're here on Dragon Con. Let's start climbing that lift. i 
Ambala towering over us. Great interaction with the other trains coming up the lift hill. abrupt oh, tell you what probably quite a while the other trains not dispatched yet hence why we came in really fast there into the brakes but there you go fantastic coaster eight inversions on there fantastic design all right footage there from dragon con i've always loved that coaster very iconic ride here at port aventura it's very intense really forceful lots packed into the layout and a long ride there as well yeah, like the layout on there is just absolutely fantastic but i do find it a bit intense in some sections so it's not for me it's one of the most intense bnm coasters out there in my opinion dragon con i do think it's quite smooth though for its age you've got to think it's only one year newer than nemesis back at alton towers of course that's having its huge track replacements of course that wasn't really done because it was rough uh, more because of its location in the pit um, but still i think for its age this ride's really yeah, it's good not, it's not rough at all it's just i do find it just so intense aggressive that's the word that's to describe word. it aggressive anyway we're going to head into the big theater now here in the china area to go and watch divas they always do brilliant shows here at port aventura world and yeah the entertainment in here is always top class in fact it's always one of the best theme park shows you'll ever see the great thing is you're allowed to film it and take photos as well as long as there's no flash so we're going to make our way over to the theater now and the Chinese themed area of the park looks awesome from back here as well. Look at the skyline, absolutely gorgeous. It really is one of the most beautiful parks out there. I just wish it was better operated, I really do. Uh, anyway, here's a look at the theatre. And yeah, time for Divas. We're watching the 4.30 show. Can't believe it, the day's going so fast today. Luckily, it is open until 10.30 and maybe later on, um, we'll get a few more rides in when it starts to filter out a little bit in the evening. But uh, let's go and watch this in the big theatre and we'll put in some highlights for you.
Some highlights there from Divas, the show here at Port of Ventura for 2023. And I tell you what, that was absolutely incredible. Always some of the best theme park shows you'll ever see in that theatre. And that one was no different. I loved it so much, that oh, show. that was absolutely brilliant. Like, there was just so much going on. The songs were fantastic. The costumes was brilliant. Oh, I loved it. The lighting's always amazing as well. The screens at the back. And yeah, there's just some amazing tech in there. That's what I always like with the shows here. They keep it modern. They bring the latest tech in uh, with all the lighting and yeah, the special effects. Just overall a fantastic show it's 30 minutes in length it's fully air conditioned in there of course Lovely. if you're coming to this park do not miss divas uh, and any show they always run a show in there every year it's a huge theater uh, it's probably the best theater you'll ever see in a theme park and yeah the show was fantastic huge cast loads of acrobats in there it was just all around a fantastic show and they do a really good job uh, when it comes to putting the whole production together there uh, there's not one part where you kind of sat there thinking oh come on move on to the next the whole thing is just relentless it's isn't it from start like, to finish I just didn't want it to end because it was just so good yes the transitions between it all yeah, as well it just works so well they put it together so well and they always have done I've been seeing shows in there for many years uh, Halloween there's always fantastic Christmas there's never a poor show in there always brilliant and well worth coming to this park and seeing that show fantastic really enjoyed that just walking back through far west just here now taking in the sights and sounds I do love the theming of this park it's always great and we just see some more street theater actually up there really good to see more street performers they always do such a fantastic job with entertainment i wish that operations were as good as entertainment and the overall just vibe of the park because i do love just the atmosphere walking around port aventura if they could literally get them operations sorted out we're talking one of the best parks in the world right here you know well, we just had a little bit of food down in Mediterranean. I went for a hot dog, same ones that I had at Ferrari Land yesterday. Very nice, Oscar Mayer hot dog. You know, making our way now down into the Q4 Stampeda. Well, what's this you got here, Charlotte? Nice no, cream. Oh, there you go. Is that what, five euros for two scoops? Beautiful. There you go, from Ben and Jerry's. They've moved Ben and Jerry's off to the left a bit now. Hey, here it comes. 20 minutes advertised wait for Stampeda. Let's see if they've done any more retracking on here. I know it's been a multi-year project to retrack loads of it because it was very unbearably rough in places. However, yeah, we have done some retracking. It's made it better. We just need some new trains on here now. Get some Millennium Flyers on here from GCI and they'll be laughing. <laughs> and this, is, of course, is the part where you pick if you want to go blue or red. Red's normally the quieter size. I think we'll go for that. Blue looks pretty busy. Let's head over this way and give it a go. Stampede. See how it's riding today. And we actually waited 20 minutes there as advertised for a ride here on Stampedo. Let's go on and have a race with the blue train on the other side. And we're off. Stampedo. Oh! <laughs> Fantastic layout this coaster. It's another John Wardley special, this one. However, unfortunately, it's a train design that's not great. Yeah, I was uh, quite shallow for this one. It feels like you're sitting on a garden oh, bench, doesn't yeah, it? It feels like. <laughs> Literally. So right down here, so I'll wait for the other train. Play the break. Woo! A racing blue. Yeah! Woo! What a view. Oh boy, it feels rally today. one of the worst rides I've ever had on it. I can't believe it. 
Oh, that's riding worse than it used to. You're right there, Charlotte. I need some to oh up God, that. Oh, oh, that was God. bad. Maybe it's the heat, but yeah, I'd probably say on this corner that. coming in, then the train oh. was shaking like mad, wasn't it? Oh, that was not good, Stampeder. Oh, I tell you what, that was absolutely terrible how that was running today, wasn't it? I really didn't enjoy that. Like, I have got a massive headache after coming up there. Yeah, I mean, wooden coasters, of course, you don't want them to be silky smooth because it's a woody, it's all part of the experience for it to be a bit rattling. But that is taking rally to the next level. Terrible. Like, that's riding like it was maybe eight, nine years ago before they did any of the retrap work. That was terrible, maybe because of the extreme heat, but um, it's no good really having a coaster like that in Spain, is it? That doesn't it's ride like that. It's enjoyable, like coming up and just having a banging headache. I'd love to see that RMC to be honest. Like, I love a good Woody, however, that just isn't one anymore. And that really does need to be RMC or even a full GCI retract and then Millennium Flyer trains on there, basically like Wicker Man at Alton Towers. It just needs major work, it's just unbearable and it's not enjoyable. Yeah, there's no padding either like, <laughs> on there, which is oh, side side. crazy. The original trains on there were so much better. I have no idea why they replaced them all those years ago. But yeah, get Millennium Flyers on there, it'd be much better. But yeah, that was not enjoyable at all. There it goes, bag of bones. Yeah, it's such a shame. The layout's great, like I say, it was done by John Wardley. Yeah, the train design, absolutely terrible on there. And yeah, it ruins what could be a fantastic ride. What a shame. Stampede. We're back over here now then at Uncharted. <laughs> and yeah, it's really weird queuing up and then having all the games right next door. Just take away from it a little bit. <laughs> right, you might be thinking, oh, where are they going? We're actually trying out a single rider this time. Of course, filling the empty seats on there. Let's go and see how this works. Now, of course, we don't have a clue how long this single rider line is, because we've never done it before. Yeah, so we thought we'll give it a go, and we'll let you know. So yeah, we're right down here looking, of course, at the screen at the bottom and by this window here. Let's see how long this takes. Well, we've waited about 25 minutes in the single rider queue, and yeah, next up just here, to put down into a bay. I'll tell you what though, the station is gorgeous. That's the good thing about being in the single rider queue, we can show you a bit more of it just here. Sometimes it's a big rush to get on because the baggage storage is over on the left. So you can't really appreciate the station that much, you know, so it's nice just to stand here and look at it all. Very nice details. And the station for Uncharted. Well, we just had another ride there on Uncharted. And firstly, just want to say the single rider queue is definitely worth going for. If it's anywhere near where we waited by that bottom window, um, obviously, you know, you can't predict how long a single rider is going to be. But we were quite lucky, it was moving quite well there. Yeah, literally, you go down that corridor, you turn, and then you're into, up the stairs into the station. Yeah, so it wasn't too bad. You know, worth pointing out, of course, it's got the 12 riders per train. Um, so a lot of the time, there was a lot of groups of three coming down. So it means there was a single um, in lots of the roads, which was fantastic. Now, in terms of other things we noticed on the ride this time, Time, um, we noticed some other effects, didn't we? Yeah, I noticed like some UV bats, and as we went around one of the corners, like some flame torches as well. Yeah, and they were actual props in there, I believe, they as well. Were, but still, I'm just so disappointed. Yeah, I think for me as well, that time we really noticed the audio. I mean, you probably heard it earlier on in the POV. Not like you can see loads in the POV because it's very dark in there. Um, but audio, it's not actually got any sound system built onto the train, um, you know, and that would have really benefited it because a lot of the time you can just hear everybody screaming all That's the way around yeah, yeah. and you can't really hear any audio. Video. all the speakers are placed off um, the actual trains themselves but um, you know it's a new addition here to this park I am disappointed with it though, I've got I to say. I can't take away the coaster though, the coaster is fantastic, it's it just is. the theming that really lets it down. Yeah and the theme of the exterior is great but uh, no, it's been nice to have a couple of rides on there but it's one of them we've done it twice it wouldn't bother me if I don't get on it I again but uh, we've done it and that's the main thing we've tried the main queue and single rider there's no express at the moment but it wouldn't surprise me if maybe that single rider turns into an express line at some point um, in the future and then they get rid of singles but because uh, i still think the queue line outside feels very temporary um, maybe they might change that at some point in the future no oh, i do love this area of the park there and there's Voltrix. we saw his cousin over at dollywood the other week hello Voltrix. Uh, every 15 minutes he does a little show so we're around here now at Hurricane Condor, and yeah, we mentioned earlier on that they're running a virtual queue system. Well, we found out you can actually still wait in the main queue, and that's why we saw people earlier around here. And it says 50 minutes, but it doesn't look too busy. I don't know if it's still got the single rider queue or not, but we'll find out. Yeah, earlier on it was all around here. Yeah, I do love Condor, but yeah, it's optional doing the virtual queue. And here we go and then climb it up on Hurricane Condor. Tower three, stand up. Oh, what a view. And I can't believe this, there's actually only two out of five towers operating. 
Look at Uncharted from up here. Stampina over there. Don't look down. <laughs> Red Force over there too. The view is fantastic. Looking over the park. Yeah, look at that show building from Uncharted. Wow. Here we go. So my right foot is there then from Hurricane Condor and I do love that drop tower however I don't love the operations I can't believe it's only running two out of five towers one sit down one stand up absolutely crazy that is but so uh, yeah it was worth going on probably my only time going on at this trip um, but yeah it is a great ride and the view from up there is amazing you didn't come on this time did you Charlotte? No I've had to sit down and got me a nice drink so it's just been so hot yeah it's been a bit exhausted hasn't it with all we've, the queuing we've today we've been queuing the so well. much but uh, I know you're not a massive fan of some no I'm not <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm glad that I got the stand up on there but yeah two out of five well, what are the playing at? not great at all I mean we're in peak summer aren't we surely the three other towers um, are all having technical problems but uh, yeah uh, what a shame and here we go, another look at the station area for Hurricane Condor. Yeah, as you can see, towers one, five, and also four all out of operation. Can't believe it. And it's got such a big queue. Peak summer. Oh, look at that sky just up there. Absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, we just did another ride on Shambhala. Only running two trains now out of three. However, I feel like that was improving the operation, taking a bit of pressure off the staff, you know. Yes, yeah, so that's maybe why took that third train off and you're yeah, waiting single rider only about 15 minutes which of course is fantastic um, in singles there that main queue was still pretty big though but look at that sky I love this area down here it's so nice isn't it Charlotte oh look at the sky it's like a nice pinky colour tonight which is lovely yeah and just walking under here like all the rocks and yeah this whole area completely no access before Shambhala even though Dragon Khan was here this pathway didn't exist um, it's beautiful round here. We've got about an hour to go until Fiesta Ventura and the parade. What we're going to do, we're going to film the parade tonight and then film Fiesta Ventura tomorrow night for you all. Oh, there goes Shammy B again. And yeah, just walking through Sesame Ventura just here now. Of course, the Sesame Street themed area. Tree always looks really nice, especially with all the lights on there. And yeah, we'll have more of an explore of this area tomorrow and show you what rides there is in the day two vlog. Come and join us. And we sort of walked through the Polynesian themed area. Yeah, we haven't seen any of the rides in there today. Well, of course we will be tomorrow in the day two vlog. I think we've decided based on operations today, as much as I don't like doing it, we're probably gonna go for Express tomorrow. So obviously we've not done Furious Baco, lots of the other rides, the water rides too. Uh, I think we're just gonna have to go for it tomorrow based on what we've seen operations wise today. Um, yeah, we'll talk more about that, of course, at the end of the vlog. Yeah, look at all the nice lights down here in Mediterranean. We're going to get in position now, ready for the parade, and of course Fiesta Ventura as well. However, we're going to put the highlights in from that for you all at the end of our day two vlog tomorrow. Just there. 
I do love the Paul and Tour Parade, especially at night, just here, uh, all the lighting. Here in Mediterranean. end of our day one vlog here from Puerto Ventura World in Spain. There's something about coming to Spain in the summer that I absolutely love and yeah you just saw some footage there from the parade at the end of the day. I think it's great how they do that and then it rolls straight in to Fiesta Ventura. We have just watched that and it was incredible wasn't oh, it? Was it was so good. And we're going to be sharing highlights in the vlog tomorrow for you all. Uh, that's one of the main reasons for coming in the summer. We we'll normally come in peak period but it's worth it uh, for Fiesta Ventura so come and join us in day two for that. But of course uh, we've got quite a few rides in today we're nowhere near as many as we would have liked to the operations have been pretty terrible here today at Port Aventura I've been coming here for 18 years and I've never seen it operated so badly I tell you what though I'm glad we came for uh, of course to see Uncharted because it was a big ride opening this year we wanted to get it in and the coaster itself was good fun wasn't it yeah, like, I really enjoyed the coaster but it really needs some better theming like I feel like the money's been spent on the ride system obviously but too much on the exterior of the ride yeah it feels half finished in a way exactly. doesn't it like Maybe it is, I don't know, maybe they're going to do more work in there, but uh, yeah, em entering a big empty show building. But yeah, in general, of course, it was great to get back on Shambhala. You all know by now, I love that coaster. And I love this park, everything other than the operations. The theming is beautiful. Uh, you walk around all the different areas, the music, the songs, they get so much right here. Of course, Divas, the show was amazing oh, today. I love that, that was so good. Like, that's the thing, you come to this park, the entertainment, some of the best theme park entertainment you'll ever see. Oh, so bad, oh, they need oh. to sort them out so much. Yeah, terrible operations here today. It's been such a shame. I don't think I've ever been here and had a day so poorly operated that we haven't even got on things like Furious Back Out today. I like, you don't know no water rides or anything. Tomorrow we might just give in and get the express passes. Um, because, yeah, you know my thoughts on fast track. I don't really like doing it, but at this yeah, park, sometimes you just have to, and especially this trip with how it is. But um, come and join us tomorrow because we've got Temple del Fuego, which is going to be amazing. I've not done that for maybe like five years, could be longer than that. That. Of course, we've got the Fiesta Ventura show coming up, which we just watched and was phenomenal. That's Loved a great it. show. It's more than just fireworks, it's floats and everything. So that's coming up. And of course, more on ride POVs, more of the atmosphere. And yeah, another lovely sunny day here at Port Aventura. But uh, yeah, what a day. It's always nice to get back to this park for, uh, to see get the rides and see the park. But yeah, them operations. Uh, oh God, it's been really, really painful at points today. It's been like uh, to the point that I thought, God, like get me to the end of the day, you know. And you don't want that when you're at a theme part dear especially such a beautiful one like this uh, there's been a lot of rumors actually about universal possibly buying back this park i'd love to see that happen it would certainly improve the operations but all going a bit quiet on that but there's certainly speculation about that at the moment it used to be a universal resort it was universal mediterranean or universal's port aventura at one point so that would really sort this park out but uh, that's a topic for another video in the future that leaves us with one final thing to say get out there and keep on riding we'll see you all tomorrow